A Sermon on Lenten Fasting by St. John Vianney. My dear brethren, we read in Holy Scripture that the Lord, while speaking to his people of the necessity to do good works in order to please him and to become included in the number of saints, said to them, The things that I ask are not above your powers. To do them it is not necessary for you to lift yourselves to the clouds nor to cross the seas. All that I command is, so to speak, in your hands, in your hearts, and all around. I can easily repeat the very same thing to you, my dear brethren. It is true that we shall never have the happiness of going to heaven unless we do good works. But let us not be afraid of that, my dear children. What Jesus Christ demands of us are not the extraordinary things or those beyond our powers. He does not require that we should be all day in the church, or that we should do enormous penances, that is to say, to the extent of ruining our lives, or even to that of giving all our substance to the poor. Although it is very true that we are obliged to give as much as we possibly can to the poor, which we should do both to please God, who commands it, and also to atone for our sins. It is also true that we should practice mortification in many things to make reparation for our sins. There is no doubt but that the person who lives without mortifying himself is someone who will never succeed in saving his soul. There is no doubt but that, although we cannot be all day in the church, which yet should be a great joy for us, we do know very well that we should never omit our prayers, at least in the morning and at night. But you will say there are plenty who cannot fast, others who are not able to give alms, and others who have so much to do that often they have great difficulty in saying their prayers in the morning and at night. How can they possibly be saved, then, if it is necessary to pray continuously and to do good works in order to obtain heaven, because all your good works, my dear brethren, amount to prayer, fasting, and alms deeds, which can easily perform, be performed as you shall see. Yes, my dear brethren, even though we may not be well or even be infirm, there is a fast that we can easily perform. Let us even be quite poor. We can still give alms. And however heavy or demanding our work, we can still pray to Almighty God without interfering with our labors. We can pray night and morning even all day long. And here is how we can do it. All the time that we deprive ourselves of anything which it gives us pleasure to do, we are practicing a fast which is very pleasing to God, because fasting does not consist solely of privations in eating and drinking, but of denying ourselves that which it pleases our taste most. Some mortify themselves in the way they dress, others in the visits they want to make to friends whom they like to see others in the conversations and discussions which they enjoy. This constitutes a very excellent fast and one which pleases God because it fights self-love and pride and one's reluctance to do things one does not enjoy or to be with the people whose characters and ways of behaving are contrary to one's own. You can, without offending God, go into that particular company, but you can deprive yourself of it to please God. There is a type of fasting which is very meritorious. You are in some situation in which you can indulge your appetite. Instead of doing so, you take, without making it obvious, something which appeals to you the least. You are buying chattels or clothes. You do not choose that which merely appeals to you. There, again, is a fast whose reward awaits for you at the door of heaven to help you enter. Yes, my dear brethren, if we want to go about it properly, not only can we find opportunities of practicing fasting every day, but every moment of the day. Tell me, now, is there any fasting which would be more pleasing to God than to do and to endure with patience certain things, which often are very disagreeable to you? Without mentioning afflictions or so many other things which are inseparable from our wretched life, how often do we not have the opportunity to mortify ourselves and putting up with what annoys and revolts us, Sometimes it is work which wearies us greatly. Sometimes it is some person who annoys us. At another time it may be some humiliation, which is very difficult to endure. Well, then, my children, if we put up with all that for God and solely to please him, these are the fasts which are most agreeable to God and most meritorious in his eyes. 
you are compelled to work all the year round at very heavy and exacting labor, which often seems as if it is going to beat you, and which does not give you the time to draw your breath. Oh, my dear children, what treasures would be you be storing up for heaven if you so desired by doing just what you do and in the midst of your labors, having the wisdom and the foresight to lift up your hearts to God and say to him, My good Jesus, I unite my labors to your labors, my sufferings to your sufferings. Give me the grace to be always content in the state in which you have placed me. I will bless your holy name in all that happens to me. Yes, my dear children, if you had the great happiness to behave in this way, all your trials, all your labors, would become like the most precious fruits which you would offer to God at the hour of your death. That, my children, is how everyone is in his own state in life can practice a kind of fasting, which is very meritorious and which will be of the greatest value for, to him for eternal life. I have been telling you, too, that there is a certain type of almsgiving which everyone can perform. You see quite well that almsgiving does not consist solely in feeding those who are hungry and giving clothes to those who have none. It consists in all the services which one renders to a neighbor, whether of body or soul, when they are done in a spirit of charity. When we have only a little, very well, let us give a little. And when we have nothing, let us lend if we can. If we cannot supply those who are unwell with whatever would be good for them, well, then, you can visit them, you can say consoling words to them, you can pray for them so that they will put their state to good use. Yes, my dear children, everything is good and precious in God's sight when we act from the motives of religion and of charity, because Jesus Christ tells us that a glass of water would not go unrewarded. You see, therefore, my children, that although we may be quite poor, we can still easily give alms. I told you that, however, exacting our work was, there is a certain kind of prayer which can, that we can make continually without, at the same time, upsetting our labors, and this is how it is done. It is seeking, in everything we do, to do the will of God only. Tell me, my children, is it so difficult to seek only to do the will of God in all of our actions, however small they may be? Yes, my children. With that prayer, everything becomes meritorious for heaven. And without that will, well, all is lost. Alas, how many good things, which would help us so well to gain heaven, go unrewarded, simply by not doing our ordinary duties with the right intention. I hope you found this edifying, and I hope you have a blessed Lent.